The Final Fantasy Legend was a Game Boy game from September 1990. It's actually a rebranding of another Squaresoft property called Makai Tauchi Saga from December of 1989. Writing off the success of Final Fantasy on the NES, Squaresoft decided Saga would have a much better chance at success in the West if they attached a Final Fantasy name to the game. It's literally only the name that's different. That doesn't make the game bad by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, decades later, I think that was a great way to expose the Western audience to more of what JRPGs could offer. Being one of the first Game Boy games out there, you're going to be surprised at just how fleshed out this game really is. You start the game by simply selecting your lead character from a pool of eight. Their stats are immediately higher than any other member of your future party but that can change very quickly before you even leave the first area. This game has three different types of character classes, which may sound small at first, but then there are subclass details within those three. First, you have humans. There are male humans, which start off with more strength, and female humans, who start off with more agility. There are different items available that take advantage of either stat for attacking. Humans only get stat boosts out of equipping armor and using stat perma-boost items from item stores. They are the only ones who can use all items in the game and boast an 8-slot backpack for instant combat usage. They're easily the most expensive class to keep up to pace. Next, there are mutants, both male and female as well. Where they differ from humans is that they have random stats and ability boosts as you progress through the game. They can only hold four items in their backpack because the other four slots are reserved for random abilities. It's great to get random stat boosts and abilities, but you can't lock those abilities in. If you liked getting, say, a fire spell, it's tough luck when the game decides to replace or outright just remove it from your mutant. The final class this game has to offer are monsters. Monster stats and abilities are all completely locked. However, you're not stuck with one monster throughout the entire game. If your monster eats the meat of other monsters, they will transform. They could become a stronger monster or possibly a weaker one. It may seem random and a gamble, but trust me, there's a method to the monster rankings. You just have to figure it out. This all means that there's three different ways to level up your characters in one game, which feels very unique to me even to this day. Even team compositions could be completely different throughout each playthrough. Traversing the world in combat are your basic JRPG fare, but weapons actually have a limited use, and you need to keep in mind the need to replenish them over time. This doesn't really become too much of an issue, so long as you're paying attention. Keeping that in mind, the game can feel like a grind from start to finish. Not a problem for me, but it could really turn some people off. Much like a typical JRPG, the party must venture forward, helping citizens along the way to reach their ultimate goal. In this case, it's to scale the mysterious tower at the center of their world. Without giving too much away, I can say the overall plot is not what I expected. I give the gameplay of the Final Fantasy Legend an 8 out of 10. Okay, so we're talking about a game that came out in the first year of the Game Boy's life, so graphics aren't going to wow you. But looking deeper, every pixel feels like it's used to great effect. Characters use enough artwork to have unique sprite work. You generally are able to tell what they are, save for the sprite reuses on similar monster types. When you get into battles, you're treated to Dragon Quest style first person combat where there's artwork of the enemies you fight and room for text of the actions. You don't get more than just a slash or fire effect across the enemies. Even back then, Squaresoft was on top of their shading game. The game is generally flat visually, but there are key areas that shading and highlights make the world feel more real than it should. I give the Final Fantasy Legend graphics a 9 out of 10. Right off the bat, you're treated to what could be considered a Final Fantasy style song, however the hardware limitations just hold it back like it's trying to be an imitation. Other music through the game feels generic, yet appropriate, not much more than that. The overworld theme though is kind of a bop and makes traversing town to town a pleasure, if not dangerous. The battle song is not going to find its way into JRPG top 100s, but it works. Good thing it doesn't get annoying, because it's the only battle song you're going to hear throughout nearly the entire game. Big props to the final boss song though, it's actually hella legit and I highly recommend you look for the original and all its remakes. The sound effects are… there. Not much else can be said about them. They sound like they belong to their actions, but they're not overly pleasing or amazing. The music and sound of this game gets a 6 out of 10.
The Final Fantasy Legend is, in fact, my very first RPG game. Mind you, I was really young and didn't really understand what was truly going on in a deep sense. The gameplay loop had me hooked, and the fact that I could save anywhere at almost any time guaranteed I would return and finish this game. I cannot overstate how much this was a gateway game to the rabbit hole of JRPGs for me. By playing this game, I learned how patience, perseverance, and strategy can win the day. I fell in love with the addiction of stat growth and party management. Heck, even playing a bit of this game for the review video put a big old smile on my face. Nostalgia hit is a 10 out of 10. In this era, going back to a 35-year-old Game Boy game might not be so appealing, and I can't really blame anyone for that. The Final Fantasy Legend is slow, grindy, and aged, but damn if it still isn't a solid game. The gameplay is great, the graphics work very well, and the story might surprise you. It's definitely worth at least trying once, especially since it's easy to pick up and put down. I'll even do you one better. If you don't have the patience for an old Game Boy game, try the remake of Makai Taoshi Saga on the Wonderswan from 2002. It's the exact same game with a few quality of life, graphic, and audio improvements. What can I say? I'm a sucker for games that developed me into the kind of gamer that I am today. 